The following program is sponsored by the Medicine Center Pharmacies. Good morning and welcome to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your pharmacist, Paul Way. We're very glad you joined us this morning. Before we begin, I'd like to thank Mercy Medical Center, Studio Arts and Glass, Kiko Auctions, and of course, our technical producer, J.D. DeAngelis. In the studio with me is Nancy Warmby, Executive Vice President of Medicine Center Pharmacy, and our very special guest, Nicole Stalinski, diabetes educator, licensed dietitian at Mercy Medical Center. Good morning, and welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me this morning. I'm really great to be back, and hope we have another great show. So if you are one of the more than 29 million Americans with diabetes, then you probably know this chronic condition can increase your risk for developing serious complications including heart disease and stroke, high blood pressure, blindness and kidney, and nervous system diseases. However, proper diabetes management can delay or even prevent the onset of complications, allowing you to live a happy, healthy, and productive life. If you or a loved one have insulin-dependent type 1 diabetes, the more common type 2 diabetes, or pregnancy-induced gestational diabetes, today's show will discuss positive lifestyle changes that will benefit your health now and in the future. We'd like to remind you that today's program is also available on our podcast, which can be downloaded from the App Store on your mobile phone. Look for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy, and you can listen to any of our programs anytime. If you have questions you'd like addressed during the program today, post them on our Facebook feed or call us at 330-450-1480. So it's great to really have you back, Nicole. Um, can you introduce yourself again? We've been on, you've been on the show before, but... Um, Tell us what you do at Mercy Medical Center. Yes, um, as you said, my name is Nicole Selinsky. I am a registered licensed dietitian. I've been with Mercy Medical Center a little over 20 years um, in the capacity of the diabetes education coordinator for the last two. Um, and basically what I do is I run our outpatient diabetes education program, um, pretty much trying to teach our patients everything diabetes from A to Z. So how about a brief explanation of the disease? Uh, diabetes. Sure. Um, you know, diabetes in general, there's different types, but um, really it's a metabolic disorder that's characterized by abnormally high blood sugar levels. We haven't cured it yet. Why not? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're, they're really trying, but no, there is no cure for diabetes. Um, that is a sad case, but every day the research is, you know, more and more coming out with different, you know, technology um, and trends and medications and, um, you know, just things to really help people learn how to control it better, but they have to get that knowledge first. When I started in the, in the prescription drug business, the only insulins we had was pork and beef and beef and pork and pork and all that sort of stuff. And, a lot of allergies to those products, things like that. And here we are down the road with some really fantastic insulin formulas, <clears throat> human insulin, stuff like that. So you're right. Yes. We've made a huge improvement on, on taking care of the disease, I guess. So. They're, tr they're trying. You know, there is so many different medications. There's many different options. Um, you know, sometimes it comes down to just, you know, what works best for you, what your provider is going to allow you to get. Um, you know, and then again, getting the education and the knowledge of what um, can work best for you and what options are available out there because it's not a one size fits all. Sure. So we said earlier that 29 million Americans have diabetes. I know I've seen uh, magazine headlines that it's epidemic. Can you talk to us about the prevalence of diabetes and how it affects our society? Yes, um, there is over 30 million children and adults in um, America that have diabetes. Um, a pretty staggering uh, number is about 86 million have what we call prediabetes, which I know we're going to probably touch on later. But the scary thing is only about 11% actually know that they have this. Mm. Um, and so that's pretty scary. So, you know, the new standards of care are really pushing for um, more education and more knowledge in, in this area so people can, you know, be aware that they have it and then um, be educated on what they need to, to do to help take care of that. Can you talk to us about the difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetes? Yes. Uh, type 1 diabetes is um, actually an autoimmune disease. Um, both of them are genetic, you know, can be genetically linked. But type 1 basically um, is where your body 
or your pancreas completely stops making insulin, which is a hormone, um, and insulin is responsible um, for helping to take the sugar out of your bloodstream. So as a type 1 diabetic, your body completely stops making that. Um, so you have to have insulin to live, so you will have to replace that via insulin shots usually. Uh, type 2 diabetes is... Um, the type of diabetes where your body is still possibly making insulin, but it's just not working correctly. Um, it's kind of like a key. It's The insulin is either not fitting the lock properly to unhook that sugar and get it out of the bloodstream, or it's just not making enough insulin anymore. So that sugar tends to, to build up and cause the complications that we're, we'll be talking about. So you mentioned um, that a staggering amount of people have prediabetes or diabetes and aren't aware um, what signs and symptoms should they be looking for, and are they different between adults and children? Actually, the signs and symptoms are pretty much the same between adults and children. You know, children, depending on the age, though, might not be able to tell you what's going on, or you might not, you know, recognize it as much in them. Um, the six main things that you really want to look for, um, the first one is very frequent urination, having to go to the bathroom quite often. Um, and usually um, it's also through the evening, like through the night. Mm -hmm. So if you're getting up a lot more and going to the restroom, um, very, very thirsty. Um, your body is filled with sugar, so it's trying to dilute that. So it makes you thirsty because it wants you to drink. Um, increased hunger because you're not getting energy, so your body feels like it, it's not getting energy because that sugar is not being used. Um, you're also very, very tired. Um, so if you notice that, like in your children, where they're going to the bathroom a lot, they're thirsty, they're very tired. Um, also, you can have a lot of blur blurry vision, um, and that can actually come and go as your sugar rises and falls. So if all of a sudden you're not seeing things as clearly, um, that's something to definitely be aware of. And then unexplained, um, unintentional weight loss. Um, again, sugar is our main source of energy for our body, so when it's not being used properly, um, you know, that's one of the ways that the, the body will respond to high sugar is um, weight loss. Hmm. I guess you characterize um, treatment of type 2 as the oral products were just kind of beaten on the pancreas to produce more. And, and finally, in most people, doesn't it just stop and they have to move over to insulin products? Well, that's where, you know, being aware of that you have it and getting the proper education um, and learning the tools so you don't have that um, – something we call kind of pancreatic burnout where it, um, you know, stops making more and more insulin and then you have to take insulin. It's definitely something that can happen, but it's not something that has to happen. Um, and many of the, the new medications out there target a lot of different areas, not just the pancreas, which I think is very, very um, important and good because then it helps to target um, other ways that the body can help to improve um, your, your blood sugar levels. Sure. So, so what's gestational diabetes? Gestational diabetes is diabetes that you get when you're pregnant. Um, you know, obviously, we, most of us know, you know we have a lot of hormone fluctuations when we're pregnant, and um, it definitely is something that it kind of works the same. Your, your, your insulin and your hormones are not responding, um, so your sugars stay high, and then as you're feeding the baby, the baby sugars can stay high. So um, it's really just diabetes during pregnancy. It's very common. So usually. does it go away? Uh, gestational diabetes usually does go away as far as your blood sugars after you have the baby go back to normal. Um, as a gestational diabetic, though, you are um, a lot more at risk later on of developing uh, diabetes. Um, it actually um, increases your chance of developing diabetes by about 50% within the next 10 to 20 years after delivery. So I always tell our moms, um, really make sure that you're getting your blood work done at least once a year after you have your baby to make sure your numbers are staying where they need to be. Hmm. So have any idea what the percentage of pregnant women get gestational diabetes? It's actually about 4%. Oh, so that's pretty low. Yeah, and hmm. it's, um, I mean, 4% of all pregnancies, so um, it's, you know, it's low, but it's a good amount of, you know, people, um, and it's one of the more common things that can happen during pregnancy, um, and they're typically found out between about 24 to 28 weeks, um, or when they get their glucose tolerance tests. To more, is there more nutritional issues that cause this? Um, more, they're eating more sugar during pregnancy, sugar products. Not necessarily. Actually, it's sometimes they can be doing all the right things, and it's just the way their body is responding to, you know, the insulin or the way it's working or, or not working. So yeah. it's not um, – it definitely can help with, you know, diet issues, but it's not always just 
just that, as with any, any type of diabetes. So what is prediabetes? So prediabetes is a condition um, where your, your blood sugar is slightly elevated um, above what we consider normal, but it's not quite in that diabetic range per se um, just quite yet. And, and do you have a range uh, on your glucose reading when you're talking prediabetes? Well, um, when we'll talk about uh, what we call our uh, A1C, which is a blood test, um, your A1C level as a prediabetic is 5.7 to 6.4 percent. So that's your kind of pre-diabetic range. Yeah. So less than 5.7 is normal. Uh, 6.5 or above of an A1C is considered a, di- a diagnosis of diabetes. Okay. Um, on the pre-diabetes thing, mm-hmm. do most people during during a physical do they get a? Are they tested for for that? I mean, I know we don't do physicals like we used to mm-hmm. on, on a general visit to the physician, okay? I mean, tell me just a little bit more. I mean, that's very individualized to the physician and the patient. Yeah. Usually, if you're getting routine blood work, you're at least getting your glucose tested. Um, that particular test is just kind of a one snapshot, you know, right then. Um, if it's a little elevated, then they can go a little bit further into checking your A1C. Um, I would encourage anybody who has any type of diabetes in their family to make sure that their doctor is is checking that for sure. them. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's just something that, you you know, knowledge is power. If you know about it, you ask for it, you know, and, hey, doc, can we run our A1C? And then you can see kind of where that is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You're listening to Health Matters at the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. Are you sick and tired of waiting at the big chain pharmacies for your prescription? We've all been there. You aren't feeling well, and you go to pick up your prescription, and you're told to come back later. At the Medicine Center Pharmacy, you don't have to wait. We can fill your prescription in 15 minutes or less, and we could even save you some money on your prescriptions. Talk to your Medicine Center pharmacist at any one of our locations in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia. Visit MedShopRx.com for more information. With a heart attack, every second counts. Every moment the blood supply to your heart is cut off or reduced leads to heart damage or death. Mercy Medical Center can stop a heart attack in record time. Mercy is the only hospital in the nation that can open a blocked artery right in the ER just minutes after arrival, saving lives and preventing further heart muscle damage. That's because Mercy's Emergency Chest Pain Center was America's first to achieve full accreditation and the first to install a fully functional cardiac catheterization lab just a few steps away from our ER doors. The average time in the U.S. from ER arrival to opening of a blocked heart artery is 64 minutes. At Mercy, thanks to our ER cath lab and the area's most experienced emergency heart care team, it's faster. We're capable of opening a blocked artery in as little as five minutes. If you have heart attack symptoms, get to Mercy. We can stop a heart attack in record time. To learn more, visit cantonmercy.org slash heart. Spring is finally here. It's time to beautify your home with stunning stained glass. Studio Arts and Glass will custom design a traditional bevel glass window or add elegance to your contemporary space. The gift shop's open Monday through Saturday from 10 to 6. Call 494-9779 for our stained glass class schedule or to make a live succulent wreath. Go to studioartsandglass.com for more information. Are you tired of spending time sorting your medication? Hi, pharmacist Paul White for the Medicine Center Pharmacy. A locally owned Health Mart pharmacy, whether you are a caregiver or personally take medications, our pill packets will change how you take your medication forever. Instead of multiple pill bottles, you'll want to receive one easy dispensing box that contains all of your medications in individual packets. Organized by date, time, with instructions clearly labeled, it's simple, convenient, and safe. Call or stop by your local medicine center pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia. Health Mart caring for you and about you. Back to 
Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Nancy and I are discussing diabetes education with Nicole Selinsky. Uh, we don't have anybody to take phone calls today, do we? So I'm not going to say that. <laughs> Just listen to the program. <laughs> okay. So before the show, uh, or excuse me, before the break, we were talking about prediabetes. Mm-hmm. So if you've been diagnosed with prediabetes, what can you do to prevent that from becoming diabetes? One of the things I would like to say is that don't don't just ignore that. Um, prediabetes is kind of that big, big yellow flashing lights. Like you need to be really be aware of what's going on or you will become diabetic. Um, one of the best ways to take care of that or prevent the progression of the disease is really um, threefold, in my opinion. Um, working on eating a little bit healthier, balanced diet, um, m- exercising or just getting more movement in your day, and really educating yourself about what diabetes is and what it can cause and how you can prevent um, and, and treat it. So what about blood tests? Are there specific blood tests that uh, people with diabetes should be doing to monitor their health and their compliance? Yes, there is. Um, number one is just getting your sugar checked, you know, just getting a normal glucose test. Um, glucose and sugar are kind of inner intertwined words they kind of mean the same thing so just getting that test and then we mentioned earlier that hemoglobin a1c test which is actually a blood test that you get that measures your average blood sugar over a three-month period of time so it's not just a one snapshot of that moment it's going to kind of tell you what your average blood sugar has been three months previous to that which is a pretty good indicator of you know how you've been doing or how your numbers are going in and in what direction so those two i would say for sure Okay. Um, you should be getting at least, you know, if you're not a diabetic, at least once a year. Um, if you are, you know, your A1Cs should be done every three months. If you have a home uh, glucometer, how often should you be testing? That really depends. Um, the American Diabetes Association recommendations are, you know, if you're not on any me- kind of medications, you're just kind of doing diet and exercise only, they recommend testing around once a day. Um, if you are on any sort of um, oral pill type of medication, they recommend testing twice a day. Like, um, like morning and evening or something? Yeah, you know, um, it really it really can vary um, the fasting or the, the sugar that you test first thing when you wake up in the morning before you eat or drink. Um, it's called your fasting sugar. That's a pretty important number to check. So that would be one of the, the times if you're checking twice. And then another time would be to pick, um, you know, one of your meals um, and check two hours after the start of that meal time. It's not when you, you know, it's not right when you eat, right after you eat. You know, you really want to check about two hours after that start time. And those numbers are actually a little bit different as far as if you were checking. But that's going to give you a little bit of a snapshot of, you know, how how things are going throughout your day versus just a one time thing. Yeah. Um, and then if you are on any kind of injectables or insulin, injectable medicine that's not insulin or insulin, they do recommend testing three to four times a day. Yeah. Hmm. So how about genetics? Do they play a role in diabetes? They do play a role in diabetes. Um, both type 1 and type 2 um, are genetic-based. They do have different you know, uh, causes and reasons for them. As I mentioned, type 1 is more of an autoimmune. Um, but the the two, f- they're very Im- it's very important, but... Um, you have a predisposition to the disease, um, and then kind of something in your environment can change or trigger that. Usually with type 1, it's some sort of incident of, you know, a, a viral or something like that that kind of triggers that autoimmune disease to, to kick in um, when it was laying dormant. Um, and then with type 2, um, a lot of the times that's the, you see more of a progression. You know, you go from normal levels to pre-diabetic levels and then to diabetic levels. So, um, you know, I don't know if we'll touch on this later, but, you know, stress, you know, work changes, life changes. There's so many things that can play a factor in, you know, changes in your your blood sugar level, inactivity, more activity, diet. So before the show, um, we were talking about the classes that you offer at Mercy. And I would imagine a lot of people don't know that those classes are available Can you tell us what you do as a diabetes educator and how you help patients? Absolutely. Um, I'm very proud of our program since um, I started taking over our program in the last couple of years. We've tripled. Um, we have over 150 physicians now referring to our program, which I think is great. Um, you know, the word is getting out there that education is important. Um, you know, as a diabetes educator, my goal for my patients is to, to just make them understand and give them the knowledge of what they need to do to, to take care of themselves. Um, at the beginning of every class, I say, you know, use this as knowledge is power. Now you, you know what you can do. You have this information, and you can take it with you. 
Um, we really work with the patient individually um, as well. Um, we offer group and individual sessions um, to meet their specific needs. We are there and we have the time. Um, you know, my appointments are about an hour and a half. Um, wow. When you go to a physician's office, you might get 10 or 15 minutes, you know. Um, they just don't have the time and that's what they that we are there for and I am there for to, um, to really listen. And my goal is to equip them, the patients with the tools that they need and then the ongoing support that they need. Cause diabetes is something that can be managed, but it doesn't go away. Um, so we really offer a variety of situations for pretty much anything that the patient needs from an education basis. Um, and if they want education, all they have to do is ask their physician to write a script and send it over to me. Wow. Okay. Very interesting. Um, okay, so what is uh, normal fasting blood sugar? Well, the American Diabetes Association recommends that a fasting blood sugar be between 80 and 130. And again, that's your sugar that you check first thing in the morning before you eat or drink. Um, if you were checking that post-meal, like I said, two hours after the start of your meal, that number by the uh, ADA um, would be less than 180 is what you would be looking for. So there is a different range depending on when you're checking, which is pretty important, I think, for patients and people to understand. Okay, just out of curiosity, and I suppose this is different with everybody, you get up in the morning, okay? Um, what if you have a cup of coffee before you test it? Typically, uh, coffee and water, black coffee and water, are not going to make a huge impact in your blood sugar. Okay. Um, they could, depending on the person, have a little bit of variance. Um, you know, anytime you're drinking something, you're diluting your bloodstream, which could um, potentially change a little bit of your, your numbers. But it's not going to be um, that extreme. What's a typical time um, uh, between n no food and food or coffee or sugar or whatever for that to register? I mean, I, I realize that everybody's – probably don't get what I'm trying to ask you. I realize that everybody's metabolism is different, uh -huh. okay? Mm -hmm. but, but is it quick? Okay, so let's say I take a teaspoonful of sugar, right? Mm -hmm. How long till it, till it affects my blood glucose? That's going to be a lot more immediate than if you have, say, some eggs. You know, every food is digested um, differently per person and then per type of food. Then you get into, you know, if you're talking about a carbohydrate that breaks down to sugar, you know, a tablespoon of sugar is going to digest a lot faster than, you know, say a whole wheat pasta, which they're both kind of, you know, break down to sugar, but very differently. So that's really uh, a difficult question to put an exact number on because there really isn't one. So exercise is so huge here uh, in regulating your blood glucose. Mm -hmm. Do we get up and walk in the morning? Do we walk at night like Nancy does or... or she walks at lunch. I don't. <laughs> okay. No, really, the best thing to do, number one, in my opinion, is to walk when you're going to do it and you can fit it in. You know, if you're not going to, you know, you just got to do it when you can do it first. Um, you know, exercise works to help decrease your blood sugar by making your muscles require energy, which forces that sugar out of your blood to be used for energy. So, you know, if you say you're having a reading after dinner that is always high, um, your blood sugar reading is always high, and you're looking for a specific time to exercise, then that might be it, I'm because sure. that's going to help to decrease that number a little more immediately. Okay. <laughs> it's bottom of the hour. Time for the news. Thanks for joining us this morning on Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. Hi, this is Brad White from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Perhaps you've gotten the urge to venture outside and clean up the garage or do some yard work, resulting in muscle aches and pains. 
If you have sore muscles or aching joints, you may want to consider a prescription pain-relieving cream available with a prescription at the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Our pharmacists can work with you and your physician to get topical pain creams that can be rubbed directly on the source, reducing inflammation and pain. Topical creams avoid troublesome side effects and dependency issues that can be caused by oral medications. The Medicine Center Pharmacy has an accredited compounding laboratory, and it is your source for custom medications. Custom compounded pain-relieving creams, available only at the Medicine Center Pharmacy, where wellness begins. Visit us at MedShopRx.com for the pharmacy nearest you. That's MedShopRx.com. Spring is finally here. It's time to beautify your home with stunning stained glass. Studio Arts and Glass will custom design a traditional bevel glass window or add elegance to your contemporary space. The gift shops open Monday through Saturday from 10 to 6. Call 494-9779 for our stained glass class schedule or to make a live succulent wreath. Go to studioartsandglass.com for more information. Have you seen our new arrivals at the Half Off and Out by Store in Louisville? A great selection of spring clothes for men, women, and children. This is a great time to stop in the Half Off and Out Buys to see what's new. Lots of spring toys, and it's getting close to Easter. You'll see a lot of Easter Bunny stuff, like eggs, baskets, and lots of Easter decor for the season. So get over to the Half Off and Out Buys store in Louisville, next to the Medicine Center Pharmacy, where our quality choice products are still buy one, get one free. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, at halfoffhotbuy.com. Hi, this is Brad White, your Medicine Center pharmacist. Are you paying big bucks for a little blue Viagra pill? There's a better alternative. Starting at only $4 per dose with a prescription from your doctor, the Medicine Center Pharmacy can prepare a Sildenafil or Tedenafil tablet that melts in your mouth for an affordable price. This allows you to take care of business and still have money left over for dinner and a movie. The Medicine Center Pharmacy has four locations in Stark and Tuscarawas counties. We're here to keep you healthy and save you money. Give us a call at 330-339-4 for more information. Your severe weather station. News Talk 1480 WHBC. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your host and pharmacist, Paul White. Today, Nancy and I are talking about diabetes and diet with Nicole Selinsky. She is from Mercy Medical Center. We've got a lot more to cover this morning, so let's get back to the show. We were kind of in the middle of a question, maybe. Um, um, oh, here we go. What foods influence blood sugar the most? The ones that influence blood sugar the most are the ones that turn to sugar when they're digested, which are your carbohydrates. And those food groups are your starches or grains, like your pasta, rice, potatoes, um, crackers, cereal, um, your, all of your fruits, and then your dairy products, which include like yogurt and milk. Um, so when you eat those foods, they're digested um, down and then they're broken down more into sugar versus our foods that are our you know, lean proteins, our healthy fats, our non-starchy vegetables. I do want to say that I'm not saying not to eat those foods by any means because food is a very fruit is a very healthy food, you know, um, whole grain pasta, you know, things like that. But just being aware that they are going to be more impactful on your blood sugar is important, and um, balancing out with the other food groups is a real key in diabetes management. So, what's next for me? Do I have to get rid of the potatoes or the milk or both? Neither, um, neither actually. Um, it's about you know balancing that out with you know say um, a chicken breast or and some green beans or a salad Um, for example let's say for breakfast um, if you had um, a bowl of cereal with milk and a piece of fruit those are all healthy foods you know unless it's lucky charms necessarily but in general for you but you're getting all of those foods kind of on that one side that break down to sugar so a way to balance that out would maybe be um, have a little bit a you know, smaller bowl of cereal with, say, um, a little bit of milk and then have a couple uh, scrambled eggs with it or, you know, a handful of nuts or a string cheese, something that's going to help slow that sugar digestion um, from the other side. So you, a bran cereal is more useful, of course, than a sugar-coated who's it, you know. Yes, you know, anytime something is higher in fiber um, or more whole grain, that's going to slow down that digestion um, and slow down that rise of of your blood sugar. I've been kind of splitting my co- coffee with uh, maybe a 
scant teaspoon of sugar with uh, a substitute. Uh huh. It's okay, better, worse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, again, it really comes down to diabetes is forever. So, what is realistic for you? Um, how can you make changes that are going to be sustainable? Um, you know, if you really like that little bit of sugar in your, your coffee with your, say, a little bit of artificial sweetener, um, then maybe you, you know, decrease something else a little bit um, with your breakfast. Um, because if you do things that you hate all the time, you're not, it's not going to be sustainable and you're just going to go right back to what you're doing before, you, mm-hmm. you were doing before, and your numbers are just going to go back right back up. Yeah. Um, what about the cheeses and, and all that sort of, I don't understand it's a cholesterol issue, but is, is it a diabetes issue? Cheese in general is, um, you know, it can be a higher fat food, but it also is a food that is on the protein side, which is going to help to balance out um, the rise of blood sugar, you know, if you have a carbohydrate type food, which we just discussed. So, for example, like an apple with a string cheese, a light string cheese, it's low in fat. It's made with 1% or skim milk. Um, it can be a very healthy complement um, to, you know, your, your piece of fruit. So absolutely, it can, it can fit in. And then you got to, you know, are, do you have heart conditions? Or do you have high cholesterol? There's other things that, you know, as you would come see us as dietitians and diabetes educators, we would help navigate all of that for you. Do you have a preferred sugar substitute? Um, in my opinion, um, you know, stevia or the green packet is kind of the highest at the list. Um, it is one of the most natural ones. Um, you know, you can argue both sides of the fence, um, but if you're going to pick one, that would be the one that I would it, it recommend. It seems to have minimal or no aftertaste, which many of the other, you know, substitutes do. Yes. Uh, it is amazing when you go to a restaurant, though, you see three or four different packages mm-hmm. of, of different types of, you know, sweeteners. I've yet to see stevia in very many restaurants. but um, Usually they have Splenda, which is the yellow packet, and that's kind of the, the next one down. Um, so, you know, if you can go, if you're going to use something um, sparingly, um, you know, try the green packets or the, the stevia. Um, and then if that's not an option, the, the yellow packet or the Splenda is kind of your, mm-hmm. your, your second best. Sure. I've seen, you know, many, many products that, that uh, have like bake some baked goods and some candies and and things along that line and, and let's face it diabetics um, like sh- chocolate and, and candy and stuff just as well as much as as a, as a non a non diabetic and, mm-hmm. and we do we did pick up a line of um, uh, products that just switched their sweetener over to stevia Russell Stover. Mm-hmm. And it really, it's not bad. It's, it's, it's judged to be the best-tasting sugar-free chocolate um, of all the makers of it. Uh-huh. So, and they also, they're jelly beans, if you can imagine. Now are they're using mannitol, which is sort of a problem if you, yes. you, you know, if you chuck a whole bunch of those. But um, I, I find their chocolates really very good and their caramels. So we produce a packet. I didn't bring one with me, but. We produce a packet, um, a, 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 if you will, a, a, of a free glucose monitor, a free box of 50 strips, a, a bag of uh, Russell Stover sugar-free candy, a Lancet device, and Lancets, and we give it away free. Okay, and that gives them an opportunity to taste the, you know, the chocolates, mm-hmm. and not only to test their their glucose cheap and, and our strips. Are seven ninety five a box, and some of these strips are fifty bucks a box. People come into the store and say, "What do you mean yours are only seven ninety five So we have succeeded in, in bringing down the testing cost um, because a lot of people over the years, when they um, maybe spoiled a strip or something, they about passed out because they were so expensive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But this way, at least you can make a mistake and, and not have right. to go back to the bank. So. But, and that's great, too, because the insurance company sometimes will only cover a certain amount of strips to test per month, and then you're you're kind of locked into that amount, and um, it can be stressful if you can't afford, you know, correct. anymore. Okay. Final question on this, this, this idea here. Can diabetics have sugar? Any sugar. Lots of sugar. No sugar. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, that's kind of a loaded question, I would say. But, yes, you can. Um, you know, 
again, my philosophy in our program is um, to teach sustainability in how you you make changes in what you do. Um, is it realistic to tell you that you should never or are never going to be allowed to have something with sugar in it again? Absolutely not. So our job is to teach you, you know, what are your preferences? How does it affect you? Because everybody's very different. Um, what you can have how to balance it out um so no just because you're diabetic does that mean you can never have sugar no does that mean that you need to be more aware and watch yes um and that's what we really try and do is to teach you um how to do that individually for you and how to be um balanced and sustainable forever so you mentioned earlier how important carbs are in a diabetic diet can you tell us about carbs and, and what we should be aware of? Well, really, there's three types of carbohydrates. Um, the first one, as I mentioned, is our starches or our grains, which are, you know, like I said, the bread, rice, pasta. Um, you really want to choose ones that are more whole grain. Again, that's going to be higher in fiber. It's going to be a little less processed. So it's going to digest slower, meaning it's going to raise your blood sugar at a much slower level. Um, Fiber is another type of carbohydrate or starch. Again, the higher fiber foods, the more fiber. Um, it's going to fill your belly more, make you feel fuller longer. Digestion is going to be slower. Um, and then the third one is our sugar, which is, you know, another type of carbohydrate. And the more refined something is, um, the faster it's going to um, digest and turn to sugar. For example, um, if you eat a whole apple with the skin on, that's got more fiber. It's got more to it versus apple sauce that's been a little more processed versus apple juice which is going to skyrocket your sugar um so the more processed you get the the more impact it's going to be on your blood sugar level so if you've been diagnosed with diabetes do you have to completely change your diet Depends on kind of what it is to start with, but usually, um, you know, everybody can make improvements on their diet, I believe, in some way, shape, or form. Mm. Um, but, you know, do you have to completely overhaul everything? Probably not. We really try and, you know, what are you doing now and how can we make changes in what you're doing now versus reinventing the wheel for the patient? Um, that is usually much more successful than, you know, them feeling like they have to undo or redo everything that they've done for, you know, the past X amount of years. Yeah. Do you feel that there's any one thing that's more important than anything else? I really feel that it's almost like a, a trifold or a triangle. You know, they almost have equal parts where you look at, you know, the, the one corner is the diet piece. The other corner is your exercise activity piece. And then the other corner is, um, you know, the medication piece. Um, sometimes if you can get those all three evenly, that's really, um, you know, going to be the, the most successful for you. Okay. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. Have you seen our new arrivals at the Half Off and Out by Store in Louisville? A great selection of spring clothes for men, women, and children. This is a great time to stop in the Half Off and Hot Buys to see what's new. Lots of spring toys, and it's getting close to Easter. You'll see a lot of Easter Bunny stuff, like eggs, baskets, and lots of Easter decor for the season. So get over to the Half Off and Hot Buys store in Louisville, next to the Medicine Center Pharmacy, where our quality choice products are still buy one, get one free. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, at halfoffhotbuy.com. Are you sick and tired of waiting at the big chain pharmacies for your prescription? We've all been there. You aren't feeling well, and you go to pick up your prescription, and you're told to come back later. At the Medicine Center Pharmacy, you don't have to wait. We can fill your prescription in 15 minutes or less, and we could even save you some money on your prescriptions. Talk to your Medicine Center pharmacist at any one of our locations in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia. Visit MedShopRx.com for more information. 
You won't want to miss Saturday's event with Mercy Medical Center and the Canton Rotary Club. We are having a health screen and a wellness fair uh, starting tomorrow morning at 7, and it runs from 7 a.m. to 11. Uh, there's a basic panel of tests you can get for $40, and that basic panel is um, CBC, CMP, lipid profile, thyroid, and this gives you over 30 different results with this basic panel. We have A1Cs, PSAs, and vitamin D. So the Canton Rotary Club has been doing this now for several years with Mercy Medical Center, and I believe this is all in Mercy Hall. Is that what it's called behind the hospital? Yes, it yes, is. Yes, it is. Okay. So, as well. so I know. I know. So there will be Rotarians there to help direct you uh, where to park and, and all that sort of thing. Um, this has become a very successful event for both Mercy Medical Center and the Canton Rotary Club. Um, there's a little bit of a problem tomorrow because there's a Hall of Fame uh, walk and run and for and uh, all kinds of different events. So the 12th Street exit southbound off of Interstate 77 will be closed from 7 to 8.30. So there are other ways to get uh, into the Mercy um, complex there, uh, behind actually behind the hospital. If you're coming southbound on Interstate 77, you can go down and get off the Canton exit and go down the road, turn around, come back up, and, and the exit off of 77 going north uh, is open and goes right into Mercy Medical Center. So that could be your choice. Uh, and for those of you who live elsewhere in the cities that are coming, uh, obviously you know some routes uh, over to the hospital. So um, we recommend that uh, uh, if you don't have a physician, this is a great place to get some of this testing done at a very economical price. So we'd like to see you there. Start at 7, going to run till 11 with Mercy Medical Center and the Canton Rotary Club. With a heart attack, every second counts. Every moment the blood supply to your heart is cut off or reduced leads to heart damage or death. Mercy Medical Center can stop a heart attack in record time. Mercy is the only hospital in the nation that can open a blocked artery right in the ER just minutes after arrival, saving lives and preventing further heart muscle damage. That's because Mercy's Emergency Chest Pain Center was America's first to achieve full accreditation and the first to install a fully functional cardiac catheterization lab just a few steps away from our ER doors. The average time in the U.S. from ER arrival to opening of a blocked heart artery is 64 minutes. At Mercy, thanks to our ER cath lab and the area's most experienced emergency heart care team, it's faster. We're capable of opening a blocked artery in as little as five minutes. If you have heart attack symptoms, get to Mercy. We can stop a heart attack in record time. To learn more, visit cantonmercy.org slash heart. When we hear the word pharmacy, we think prescriptions, right? Hi, Paul White for the Medicine Center Pharmacies in Stark and Tuscarawas Counties, a locally owned Health Mart pharmacy. Of course we carry prescriptions, but our stores carry way more than that. We have a large selection of ostomy and diabetic supplies and compression socks. All of our pharmacies carry a variety of canes, walkers, bath seats, rollators, and commodes, all at super low prices. Our rollators are only $69.95. Call or stop by our local Medicine Center Pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia. Welcome back to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your pharmacist, Paul White. Thanks for joining us this morning, and now we will get back to the last segment of the show. Where are we at? Quietly. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> All right. Always fun. So I think you're up, aren't you? Yeah, so I guess my question would be, we talked uh, a little bit at break about the complications from diabetes, yes. and they are can be severe and significant. Yes. Can you explain what those complications might be and even that they affect type 2 as well as type 1? Yes. I mean, diabetes is a disease that does not leave one part of your body untouched. Um, all the way from your skin down to your heart, your toes. Um, you know, the, the big ones that we mostly hear about are um, cardiovascular disease. Um, as a diabetic, you are two to three times more likely to have a stroke or have a cardiovascular incident. Um, retinopathy, which is um, eye problems. Um, diabetes is the number one cause of blindness. Um, 
neuropathy, which is nerve damage. Um, and that nerve damage can come to um, your your hands, your feet. It can also even come nerve inside, um, you know, your digestive system. There's nerves everywhere in our body, so it definitely can affect that. Um, one of the other things that it never I... never goes away. Yeah, it does not go away. There are some things that can help it. Um, but, you know, really, as diabetes is a progressive disease, the more that you take care of now will slow the progression of not just your blood sugar rising, but all of the complications that can come from the disease. Um, I really want to talk just a second about a couple other things that people are not aware of with diabetes and how it can affect um, your increased risk for depression and for anxiety, which is a huge connection um, that people are not so much aware of now. Um, also amputations and also our teeth, our gum disease. So there's a lot of things that um, it affects everything. I'm going to take a second here and ask our listeners to take a minute and get a pencil and paper because... Uh, shortly, Nicole's going to give her contact information and talk about her classes. And if you're interested in writing down that information, let's get prepared for that. Okay. You mentioned um, oral issues. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, most people who are taking um, statins or other prescription drugs, blood pressure long, generally get a dry mouth. Yes. Um, we handle a large amount of different products for dry mouth, um, and they frankly sell quite briskly. What do you suggest? Um, there's a lot of different things out there. Um, diabetes can also cause dry mouth too. So you, if you're taking medications plus have diabetes, you know you, you're kind of twofold or threefold. Um, you know have that chance. Um, there are a couple, I'm not familiar with all of the types of dry mouth care out there, um, you know, but staying hydrated. Um, there is some that I know are like tabs that you stick in your mouth at night that really um, I know from patients there, and actually. There's a, there's a brand that actually sticks to your tongue. Yeah. To your roof your um, my father actually is a diabetic, and that is the one thing that he has found to help him the most. Um Everything is very individualized. So, you know, sometimes it's a little bit of trial and error of going through a couple different things to, to kind of figure out what works best for you. So don't be discouraged if the first thing doesn't doesn't work. Water really doesn't cut it. I mean, you can no. cut all the water. Then you're up all night. Yep, yep, yep. So, so it really doesn't cut it. I mean, you really, that particular product, and it's terrible. I can't think of the name of it because I use it. Start um, with an X. Yeah. Z- xylenol or yep, Zexylenol. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then there's biotin and there's some other products like yeah. that and gels and, and, and um, um, the, the problem with every other one but the one that sticks to your tongue is you don't want to go to sleep with something in your mouth. But this sticks to your tongue. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. It sticks to the roof of your mouth. So it's pretty amazing. It's the, the design of this product. So. Yeah, and I, the, that's the one that the, the patients that I know have used it have been the most successful and, with. And it generally lasts a long time in your mouth. I mean, I mean, I'll wake up an hour or two later or something, and it's still there. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so it, it, it's sort of a slow release, if you will. So where are we at? <laughs> We're to you talking about snacks. Oh, yeah. How about some snacks? we got to eat before we go to bed, don't we? <laughs> Sometimes you do, yes. <laughs> um, really, uh, the, the best combination of a healthy snack is to incorporate – um, a form of carbohydrate, um, for example, like a whole grain granola bar or a piece of fruit with a healthy protein or a healthy fat, a handful of nuts, a string cheese, maybe a couple whole grain crackers with um, some sort of tablespoon or two of nut butter. You really want to have that combination of that, that protein healthy fat with the carbohydrate. Man, we're having a lot of fun today. We're almost out of time. Yeah, so uh, how about if you take one second and, and share your contact information and absolutely. class information? Thank you again for having me this morning. Um, I do want to make you aware of that if you want to come to our program, any part of it, we do need to have a doctor's referral for that. Um, very simply, just tell your doctor you want to go see um, the dietitians and the diabetes educator at Mercy Medical Center, and they just need to write you a referral for diabetes education. My contact information directly to me is 330 330- Four eight nine one four eight four. You can also reach me online at diabetes dot helpline at cantonmercy dot org. My fax number, if you want to send your referral over, is three three zero four three zero two seven zero four. And I just want to let everybody know, just to take diabetes seriously. Sometimes it doesn't hurt until it's too late. You are not alone, and there is a lot of help out there for Let's you. Say goodbye. 
Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Nicole. We really enjoyed it today. Uh, Nicole Solinsky, diabetes educator from Mercy Medical Center. We'd like you to remind, like to remind our listeners, if you suspect you have a medical issue, please contact your health care provider. Thanks to Mercy Medical Center, Studio Arts and Glass, and Kiko Auctions, and, of course, our technical producer, J.D. DeAngelo. As always, thank you, our listeners, for joining us on Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Have a healthy week. We'll see you again next Friday right here on News Talk 1480 WHB. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, your pharmacists, Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now at MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. Be sure to join us next Friday at this time for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. The preceding program was sponsored by the Medicine Center Pharmacies.